Hello whiskey fans and welcome to another whiskey review. Today I've got another not inaugural release but first mass release of whiskey from a new distillery. This is Nugneen. So Nugneen is a new distillery on the west coast of Scotland and annoyingly a couple of years ago I actually drove almost straight past the distillery. I was told it was there I was also told that they weren't producing whiskey yet, which was true at the time. And because I was on a bit of a tight schedule, sadly I didn't actually get to go. So it's a bit of a shame, because it's a long way from where I live. And not particularly easy to get to unless you fly. But hopefully one day I'll be able to get to the distillery. Another thing that I'm not quite sure about with this whiskey is what to actually call it. And that's not the pronunciation of the distillery, that's the fact that there's not really a name to the expression for anyone out there that has got a bottle of this whiskey. This whiskey that I'm reviewing today is batch number five, which is a batch of 5,040 bottles. So that's a fair sized batch. There are definitely distilleries out there that make smaller batches, but at 5,000 bottles, I'd say that just about qualifies as limited edition. But the problem that I've got is that with it just saying Nugneen Organic, single malt scotch whiskey, how do we differentiate this from other Nugneen products? I don't know if organic is what they intend to have as their standard range or if they don't intend to have other expressions, but it does trigger my OCD a little bit when I'm trying to find a name for a review video and I haven't got anything to put on it. Anyway, let's go on to the other details that we have got on the label. So, organic. The Nugneen Distillery are making a big deal about how everything is organic and everything at the distillery is renewable energy. So, me personally, organic whiskey, I think it can be a little bit hit and miss in terms of what you actually get in the bottle. I've had quite a few whiskies that are described as organic and I think some of them are pretty shocking. Some of them can be really good, but personally I think in terms of how the whiskey smells and tastes, I think that the type of barley makes much more of a difference than whether it's organic or not. But I do salute Nugneen and their efforts at sustainability and their environmental cause. Certainly a good thing for the environment that they're using organic barley. And it's good that they tell you that they're doing that, so that if you agree with that cause, then you can vote with your wallet and choose to buy one of their products. Other information that we've got on the bottle, uh, I'll just point out that it is a particularly attractive bottle. Just hold that a bit closer so you can see. So there's a lovely... It looks like a seascape on the bottle. I think because you've got the whiskey in the bottle and everything is in this bluish green tint, it looks like it should be an underwater scene, but I don't think it's actually meant to be that. I think they are just meant to be organic, natural, flowery scenes on there. And as a lot of other people have pointed out, it's actually embossed onto the bottle. I'm not 100% sure how they've done that. It looks like it might be fired into the bottle itself, but I think it works really well. It's very different. It's very modern. It's very attractive. I must admit that I do like a, a rather traditional whiskey bottle, but not every whiskey distillery has to have the same presentation. I'd really prefer if they didn't. And Nugneen are doing something really different and striking, and hats off to them for it. So information on the label. It does say non-chill filtered single malt scotch whiskey but it doesn't say anything about natural colouring. But, here's the clue, what it does say is you can find out more about this batch at nugneen.com forward slash batches. And I have been on the website, and the website is a breath of fresh air because it has all the information that you could ever want about not just this current batch, but all of the batches, batches one to five. It's really transparency central when you go on there. It not only tells you that it's non-chill filtered and natural colouring, it tells you the numbers of the casks that went into this vatting, which is a vatting of 14 casks. It even tells you the yeast strings that have used. 
which for this batch, and probably all the batches I imagine, is Anchor and Fermentus. So that's really, really good that we have that information easily at hand on the website. Although, like Ralphie says, the label is the legal contract, and at least the fact that it's natural colouring should be on the label as well. Anyway, other information that they have given us on the website is that this batch is made up from 65% STR red wine casks and the remaining 35% is ex-bourbon. So for anyone out there that isn't aware, STR is a fairly modern introduction to the world of whiskey and it stands for shaved, toasted and recharred. So this is something that's quite often done with red wine casks, although it can be done to any type of cask. So what they do, they take a cask, sometimes it will be a tired old end of life cask that needs rejuvenating, or sometimes it will just be a fresh red wine cask. They will shave off the inner layer of all the staves, removing the, the saturated red wine layer from the inside of the cask. Now this tones down the effect of the red wine cask, but it also does something else important, that it exposes a fresh layer of virgin oak. So it's, you can kind of think of it as halfway between a red wine cask and a virgin oak cask. The second step, the toasting, caramelises all of those wood sugars and vanillins in the oak and prepares them to add those flavours into the whisky. The third step, the recharring, adds a fresh layer of char to the inside of the cask, which creates like a charcoal filter which helps with the maturation of the whiskey. That charcoal filter, like a, a charcoal filter in your in your water jug or anything else with a charcoal filter in it, takes all of the harshness and the impurities out of the whiskey. So me personally, when I hear that they've used 65% STR casks in this whiskey, that makes me think that they know that they've got a young whiskey and they're trying to add lots of character at the same time as removing all the harshness as quickly as they can. So I'm guessing that they, like most distilleries, they always planned to bottle a whiskey as soon as it was three years old. And from those STR casks, they've invested the money to make those early bottles of whiskey as good as they can be and as mature as they can be. I also noticed on the website under batch five, it says that the, the spirit recipe for this batch is light and fruity. Now, that's really interesting to me, because apart from the fact that from what I've tasted of this whiskey, it is light and fruity, that hints that there might be something else coming. Possibly a more heavy style of spirit coming from the same distillery, possibly a peated run. Personally, I think that would be really interesting. But let's work with what we've got now, and let's get the cork out. Get some in the glass and see what we've got. I think I probably forgot to mention that this whiskey is bottled at a proper strength of 46% ABV as well, as all whiskey should be. So on the nose of this one, I'm getting quite a strong saltiness. Strong saltiness and also quite a pleasant, to me at least, dry mineral barley note. Do you have to say that there is a bit of spiritiness to this, but it is three years old. And as spirity as it is, it's not offensively so. But the nose, it does have to be said, is exactly what it says on the, the website, light and fruity. It's a very light and playful, lowland style, very delicate scotch whisky. Getting a hint of peach, a little bit of pear, and a little gingery note in there as well, which you can imagine is probably coming from those STR casks. I'm not getting a huge amount of influence from the red wine in those STR casks, but depending on how the, the STR process is done, you don't always get that. Depending on how much of the original layer is shaved off from inside of the cask, you don't necessarily get a huge amount of actual red wine influence from them. Let's see how it tastes. So, again, salty. 
getting some quite nice notes of salted caramel getting some musty vanilla again a little bit of oak spice as I got on the tail end of the nose I think there might be a tiny hint of some red wine sort of dark fruit notes coming from the red wine casks in there but what is there is very subtle getting a hint of apple and it's not your fresh sharp green apples it's more like a, like a Braeburn like a like a more mellow red apple also getting some slightly spirity grapefruit notes which honestly is something that I really like in a whiskey also getting some maltiness and some really nice peppery spice just going to try a little bit more and see what the finish is like although I do think that the palette is really nice on this whiskey I do think that the finish is really quite short definitely no longer than medium short I would say also quite mild and neutral and really the only character I'm getting on the finish is some more of that saltiness and just a light spiritiness but we are talking about a three-year-old whiskey here you can't expect too much in the finish department on a spirit which is this young so this whiskey I paid around about 50 pounds for this for a, a three-year-old whiskey from a brand new distillery so is it worth 50 pounds the presentation is clearly world-class really nice reusable recyclable materials the glass that goes into the bottles for this Nicknean whiskey is actually recycled glass I think it's really good that they're doing the right thing and using organic barley even if it must be said that I'm not sure that it has that much impact on the actual finished product but all in all, I do think this is a really enjoyable whiskey and it is one that I would recommend. You also have to consider that as a brand new distillery, these guys have really got everything stacked against them because they essentially can't make money for the first three years of their business. They really do need our support if they're going to make a go at this. And for that reason, I think if you like what a distillery is doing, you like their branding and their mission statement, for want of a better word, if you want to support them, then I think it's actually acceptable to pay a little bit more than you normally would for a whiskey from a brand new distillery. So bearing that in mind, this is a whiskey that I would recommend and it's a whiskey that I really look forward to seeing what they're going to do in future. So from me, this is going to be a solid C+. Just going back to the whiskey itself, I do think that this is a good example of a whiskey and don't take this as a criticism, but it tastes better than it smells. The nose is a little bit muted and that saltiness on the nose and that dry minerality really dominates quite a bit. Whereas when you actually get round to the palate, there's a lot more going on. And I think on the palate, it does taste like a good quality three-year-old whiskey. It tastes three years old, no more, no less. And I think it tastes quite similar to the, the very early three-year-old whiskies from the English Whiskey Company. So talking about things like the, the Chapter 6 Unpeated. Although if anything, I'd say that this whiskey from Nagneen does seem a bit more refined than the three-year-old releases from English Whiskey. Which is a good thing, but it also means that we'll have to see how well this one is going to age. To paraphrase a maximum of a lot of old distillers... You don't want the new make to be too pretty if you want it to age into something worth drinking. Because anything that at three years old comes off as harshness, all of these things can turn into character when they're matured and refined into a much older single malt. As it is at the moment, I'm thinking that this distillery style reminds me a little bit of Glenmorangie because of how light and playful it is. Because of that, I'm wondering if this is the sort of whiskey that when it gets to maybe six or seven years old, might take a cask finish particularly well. I'm also thinking that this light, playful style of whiskey might be a good candidate for a run of peated whiskey. So like I said before, I'm really looking forward to what we get from Nagneen in the future. So let me know in the comments what you think of Nagneen whiskey and what things coming up in the whiskey world that you're looking forward to. Thanks for watching. Cheers.